Hey there, it's Michael Bust. Welcome back to my channel where I share videos uh, specifically made for my Math 7 and Pre-Algebra students. So here we go. Before we get into today's lesson, let's do another DAP joke. Why was the mathematician so afraid of negative numbers? He would stop at nothing to avoid them. Get it? All right, we're starting out chapter three, integers, and in lesson one, entitled Integers and Absolute Value, we're gonna be working in our uh, workbooks on pages 191 to 198. Uh, just a reminder to you that our essential question for chapter three is, what happens when you add, subtract, multiply, divide integers? And then our mathematical practice or mathematical behavior is going to be construct an argument. So we will focus on those two things throughout this chapter. In lesson 3.1, integers and absolute value, uh, we're going to look at both positive and negative numbers. And just so that you know, <clears throat> all the negative numbers are going to be less than zero and the positive numbers are going to be greater than zero. One, we wanna look at what number are we talking about? We're talking about five degrees and we're saying that it's below normal. And so I can represent that with the integer negative five. I want to use the same digit of five, but this time it's going to be above normal. And so I'm going to represent that with the integer positive five. So why don't you take some time to practice problems A and B on page 192. Uh, pause the video here so that you can work on it and then I will reveal the answers in just a second. So in problem A, we have six degrees above normal. So we're gonna have above meaning positive and six would be our digit, so it'd be positive six. And in B, our digit is 2, and we're talking below normal, so I can represent it with the integer negative 2. <clears throat> Oops, made a mistake. So there we go, negative 2. All right, in example 3, we want to graph the set of integers on this number line. So I already have the number line drawn for you. I just don't have uh, the values underneath each of the little tick marks. So I'm just gonna write those in. <clears throat> and so you can see to the uh, right of zero are gonna be all of the positive numbers. To the left of the zero are going to be the negative numbers. So I'm gonna start out with positive four. I'm going to find where that goes on my number line, and I'm just going to put a little circle there, a little dot, just to indicate that that's where 4 is. Now I have negative 6. I'm going to look on the left side of 0 and put a dot at negative 6, and 0, I'm going to put a dot there. All right, so why don't you try problem C and D? Um, you can do these in your book. You can do them in your notebook. Um, I would pause the video here and then come back to it so you can check your answers with mine. All right, in problem C, I'm going to put a dot at negative two, a dot at eight, and a dot at negative seven. And now I have graphed those uh, set of in integers on the number line. Now notice, <clears throat> I had to think about what was between six and eight. In D, I'm going to graph uh, negative four and positive 10. Negative three, well, that's going to be between negative two and negative four. And positive seven will be between six and eight. Let's talk about absolute value. All right, so absolute value of a number is the distance between that number and zero on a number line. 
So you can see if I'm at negative three, the distance from zero is three units. If I'm at positive three, the distance is still three units. Remember that absolute value is always going to be a positive number. I write the absolute value sign with these two kind of horizontal lines with the value in between it. All right, let's look at example four on page 193. I have the absolute value of negative four. Well, negative four is four units away from zero on the number line. In example five, I have negative five, square root of, I'm sorry, the absolute value of negative five minus the absolute value of two. The absolute value of five, negative five is five. I'm gonna subtract two from that and I'm going to get three. Now, why don't you try problems E, F, and G on page 193 pause the video and then come back to it so you can check your answers with me. All right, E, the absolute value of eight is just eight. It's eight units away from zero on the number line. So here I have two plus the absolute value of negative three. The absolute value of negative three is three. So I get two plus three is five. And then <clears throat> I have the absolute value of negative six minus five. The absolute value of negative six is six. Six minus five is one. All right, in this problem, Nick climbs 30 feet up a rock wall and then climbs down 22 feet to a landing area. The number of feet that Nick climbs can be represented using the expression, the absolute value of 30 plus the absolute value of negative 22. What we want to find out is how many feet does Nick climb? So if I just rewrite that expression, absolute value of 30 is 30, and then I'm going to add to it the absolute value of 20, negative 22, which is positive 22. And then if I add those together, I get 52 feet that Nick climbed. All right, so now that you've gone through several of these examples with the guided notes and your textbook, <clears throat> and you've used this video to help you understand uh, integers and absolute value a little bit better, I would like for you to work on these six problems to prepare for the next class period. So uh, work on page 195, numbers two, four, six, and eight, and then on page 196, problem number 12. Remember to take a picture of your work, upload it to the assignment in classroom, and get that turned in before the start of class. This way I can give you some feedback and it'll help determine where you are going to be working during that next class period. And don't forget, if you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more math tutorial videos.